Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome again to this video uh, where we are going to talk about uh, how you go about doing a four-point balance on the bell of a motor uh, by using our uh, uh, propeller balancer uh, software. So you can see here, I have set up the, uh, the screen, the program, and uh, in this situation, we really do not care about any sort of orientation with a propeller uh, because um, there is actually uh, uh, no uh, optical beam uh, that's going to get involved. It's just uh, basically working with the uh, raw parameters uh, of the uh, accelerometer uh, to give us values that we can then determine at which point our uh, bell of our motor uh, is unbalanced. Um, and, uh, you know, the way we start here, as you can see, I have my, my rig already set up and uh, I will... Uh, I'll tell you a little bit how I proceed uh, to uh, 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 give a, a test here as to how we're going to test the motor. And um, on our software here, we don't, again, worry about any of the invert X and Ys. Uh, obviously, we probably want to be at a 2G mode for the accelerometer. Uh, that will make the accelerometer the most sensitive. And as you can see here, we'll click on the four point balance and you'll see that the motor goes away and uh, we have a picture of our motor you'll also notice that on our motor we have uh, marked a zero 120 and then a two uh, another 120 degree apart uh, mark uh, so the mark from here to here is 120 degrees 120 degrees 120 degrees times three will basically give us 360 because that's where we want to be placing uh, the trial weights and uh, we have done, I don't know if you can see it here, have pretty much the same marks on our motor. Uh, have a mark here at uh, the 120, another 120 degree apart, and have a mark on the top here that's zero. And what I'm going to do here uh, to actually show you how this thing is work, I'm going to uh, purposely uh, unbalance uh, the bell of this motor. So I am again going to take a very high piece of tech here, here, a little piece of foam tape, and I'm going to arbitrarily basically place it, uh, oh, I don't know, let's place it somewhere here on the bell of the motor. And this will basically make pretend that the motor, the bell right here is now unbalanced. Okay? So what we can do is right away we still choose a uh, uh, ESC value. Um, you can keep the same values as your um, propeller balance that you were doing before. You can keep the same filters. And then each time we hit run, uh, this is actually going to progress automatically, and you'll see what we do at every one in the runs. The only thing that I uh, want to point out here, it's very important, that the optical sensor is now disabled. So basically, this is basically allowing you to free run the motor. So with that uh, in place, uh, you know, again, we're making pretend here that we have a motor that is uh, that is unbalanced, and I unbalanced it with the, uh, you know, with a piece of tape. Uh, you know, this is basically could be a motor that you just took out of a box. We're actually going to uh, begin an initial run. We're still going to get samples of our accelerometer. Now notice that uh, really this vector doesn't point in any direction. You know, this thing is going to be going crazy. It's going to be pointing in any uh, direction because, again, there is no reference uh, and there is no optical system. And after each run, uh, we're going to get a magnitude. Okay, so now, uh, pre again, pretending that this was our motor that we first took out of a box, we're going to take a trial weight. Again, another piece of tape here. And what you can do with this trial weight is before you actually place it on the motor, you can get a very fine granular scale and weigh it. Uh, I am not going to weigh it uh, uh, in, in this type of uh, uh, an example, but I'll show you how you can use the weight because doing this method is also going to allow you to determine the amount of weight uh, in the direction that then you would need to add to balance the motor. So the first thing that we do is very importantly, we now have to place this at our zero degree mark of our motor which is right here, which again, I have um, I have marked on the motor. And that is this mark right here. I'm going to take this piece of tape and I'm going to place it at the zero degree mark as accurately as possible. Okay. And then I'm going to simply hit run again. You'll see that automatically when I do that, it automatically will advance to the second uh, run. Okay. We're going to head and take a run. And as you, be as you can begin to see here, um, 
that's really the process, right? We, we take a trial weight and we place it at a zero and then 120 degree apart for three other uh, locations um, on the bell of the motor. And then when that's done, you'll see that we're going to get a result uh, that we can then analyze to tell us which way the imbalance of the bell is. Okay, so we place that at the zero degree mark right here. We are now going to go clockwise and we're going to place it at the 120 degree mark, which is the mark of the motor right there. Make sure this thing sticks. And then we're going to do it again, obviously, for the last remaining 120 degree, uh, degree apart from this side. We're going to take another run. Again, the counter um, or the four point uh, location on the motor is going to automatically, uh, you know, the software is going to automatically advance for you. So you don't have to remember to click, you know, one, two, three, four, just keep hitting run. Uh, and this thing is going to automatically advance. And then I will uh, tell you how we can actually interpret the results. Again, the vector really all over the place because there is really no optical system involved. And then the last, here's my uh, another 120 degree mark here. So we went 0, 120, and then another 120. And this will be the last run. Again, this is pretty sticky tape here. Just want to make sure it's on the bell of the motor. Okay, and then we hit run again. So when this is finished, I have another screen here, but automatically what you'll begin to see, uh, what you'll see is that this screen here sort of automatically come up in the software. And then what you see on the bottom here is you see the, ma the magnitude uh, of the four different runs. This was the first run. Uh, again, we may pretend that this is just a plain motor. Uh, this was the second run with our weight uh, placed at the zero degree mark. The third run, 120 degrees and the fourth mark 75. So right away by looking at, the, at this result here you begin to see that when we placed our weight uh, at the second location the 120 degree location the magnitude I'm sorry at the third location which the, the, the third run okay so the first was with no weight the first the weight here the third right here we got the magnitude to be a lot less. Now you can actually also, you know, we can zoom in here, you can scale this, right? So you can get a better uh, a better view. So, you know, we, without really analyzing anything here, just by looking at my numbers, I'm pretty safe to say that if I was gonna place a weight at the motor, uh, really at the, at the 120 degree mark, that would have balanced it better than what it was originally. But, you know, let's assume that you didn't pay attention to this, how can you determine this? In any classical four-point balance system, you know, what you see here is you see the four circles of, our four, of, of the four runs. The first circle was with the, with the motor plane. The second was with the weight uh, at zero, the third, and the fourth. And basically what we want to look for is we want to look for a spot around the motor that all of these circles uh, intersect. Okay, and also noticing that our third run was the run that gave us the least vibration. It's pretty safe to say that in this direction is where the motor is imbalanced. In, in actuality, where the circles intercept or as close, you know, you might get the circles that intercept or um, uh, a circle here doesn't exactly intercept this. You have to um, basically uh, find the spot or as close as possible to the intersection of all uh, the three circles. And this spot right here, for me, seems to be the spot that it was. And then again, uh, uh, to, to point uh, in that direction in case, you know, well, they also intersect here. Yeah, but 
uh, you know, the, the yellow one doesn't. So it's really in this direction. And then if we were actually going to add a trial weight, remember we added a piece of tape that we should have weighted before, we can make pretend that, uh, I don't know, this piece of tape was, let's say, 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.01 of a gram. Uh, we can then, if you click on this uh, screen here, you will see that there is a white uh, line uh, and a marker here that, that, that gets uh, pointed to where your mouse is. We can take that and bring it to that point where we think the circles intercept, and then you can actually you know, move that. You can fine tune it. Um, with the markers here, you know, try to bring that red dot. Now, obviously, you know, this is scaled, so we would actually need to do it um, in this manner. And then, uh, you know, I have some other features uh, here coming up that will actually take into consideration the skill. But, you know, that's a pretty safe bet, right, that this is the imbalance. And it would also tell us here that if our original weight was 0.1 gram, but now you know, at a vector of 45 degrees, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, of the vector of magnitude of 45 and angle of 331 degrees, but we know already what this is because, again, we marked it on the bell of our motor. If we were going to place a weight of 0 0.0069 grams, and then again, you can fine tune uh, this here, you can see as you move the vector, the weight also moves, okay? But again, it's safe to say that this is pretty much the uh, point of intersection of these circles, uh, that this motor would have been balanced. So if we take a look at our motor here, if we take a look at the motor and uh, we remove this trial weight, right? This was the, sorry, this was the original imbalance. We remove this trial weight, okay? And we look at the reference marks. This was the zero. This was 120, the first one. This was the second 120, and this is where we purposely put the imbalance. You'll see well, where our circles intercept with the screen is basically here in this, in this location. And if I turn the motor around, well, guess what? Where I purposely placed the imbalance is completely opposite. Here's our 120. Here's where the imbalance is, where it says we need to place the weight to counterbalance this weight here. So as you can see, this four-point balancing run required no reference other than a trial weight that was placed strategically 120 degrees apart on the bell of the motor. And using our tool here, it automatically pointed to the direction where we need to add weight in order to counteract that imbalance. And if we take that weight, right, and it's 0.067 grams, right, and we placed it specifically here on the motor, then we have another run. You will see that your vibrations have been considerably reduced. Um, and pretty much, you know, that is the process of um, four-point balancing, four -point balancing um, your motor. Now, uh, obviously, we want our accelerometer, especially for a motor that is very, very well balanced, to be as sensitive as possible. So this is where you need to do a little bit of... Uh, you know, trial here uh, to try to determine what really gives you, uh, you know, good vibrations, <laughs> just like the song, uh, to be able to, uh, uh, you know, determine very minute adjustments that you need to do. You know, most of these motors these days, um, especially good quality ones, like, you know, I have a Sunny Sky here, come pretty well balanced, so you probably don't need to go through this process. But uh, if you do and, and you really want to find out how well or how not so well, you know, your motors are balanced, uh, go through this four-point calibration procedure, and it will basically give you a very good indication uh, here uh, of how well or how not uh, too good, you know, the bell of the motor is. I'm planning on some additional releases uh, to this software that will probably add additional functionality here. I, I'm basically using magnitude here of an FFT, and we can see if we can improve on that a little bit. Um, but also, uh, you know, maybe give better control here on the uh, scaling. But, uh, you know, I just wanted to basically show you the process that you go through uh, to determine how well the bell of a motor, you know, is balanced. Uh, obviously, under a perfectly balanced uh, motor, all of these circles would have not really come together at a, you know, at a very fine intersection point here. Um, 
they would have been pretty much equally you know distributed around here and that would have showed that the that the motor is very very well balanced but in this situation it wasn't because by placing a clearly a, a trial weight at the first 120 degree mark basically counter balance the motor so if this bell was really unbalanced by placing this weight here would have given us a much better you know balanced motor and again it all depends on where these three circles intercept and then having this vector here for you uh, to be able to determine uh, you know the the trial um, the trial weight uh, that you need to add uh, in order to counterbalance um, you know that uh, that uh, that imbalance Okay, uh, hopefully this helped a little bit to explain how four-point balancing work. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to, uh, you know, post them on our uh, uh, little, uh, uh, you know, RC group forum there, and I'll be more than glad uh, to answer any additional questions. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, you know, let me let me see some of the rigs that you've built, and I'm hoping that uh, you know so far this software has been working well for you to uh, you know balance propellers, uh, but also uh, you know balance uh, balance the belts of your motors. Uh, once again, thank you for watching.